And we're back with the Buffalo Juggalo Radio Show. Now, it's time for our new segment, my favorite segment, Get Schooled by Polmar. Um, and this week, see, we've done math, we did um, some random science last week. This week, we're going to do history. And really, the only logical place to start with history, I mean, we could talk about the Neanderthals and, you know, cavemen and evolution of man and stuff yada yada but we're going to start with the beginning of recorded history and that would be with the first civilization mesopotamia now if all of you remember back to your ninth grade social studies and history classes uh there were four actually there were five but there were four main river valley civilizations there was uh the mesopotamia uh which we're going to talk about there's also the indus river valley there was the yellow river valley in china and there was the nile river valley which you know egypt um like i said and we'll probably go through through these you know throughout the when we do the history segment to try to mix it up each week but today we're going to talk about mesopotamia and i'm going to do my best <laughs> because there's a lot i'm going to try to cram it as quick as i can i don't know if this segment's going to be as interesting or funny or <laughs> adult oriented as the last few but we'll try and also I've smoked quite a bit so we'll see how this goes now um, I feel like I'm running a, a GED review course here or something <laughs> um, so let, let, let's just and, and I have just like a, a I have notes here they're kind of they're, they're kind of organized so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run through my uh, my lecture now <laughs> So, Mesopotamia. Basically, the history of Mesopotamia begins uh, in 3100 BC, and it runs straight through until the fall of Babylon, which we'll get to, in 539 BC. Uh, and then 150 years later, uh, it was conquered by Alexander the Great. You all know him. After Alex's death, uh, it basically, by default, became part of the Greek Empire until 150 BC, uh, Roman... Uh, the Roman Empire took control until 226 AD when it fell to Persian, uh, or it fell to the Persian Empire, Persia. And that lasted until about the 7th century, uh, the Arab Islamic conquest, where the area became Iraq. At the time, though, Mesopotamia uh, covered Iraq, Kuwait, and parts of Syria and Turkey. It was kind of a large area. It, um, it basically dominated the area between the Tigris and the Euphrates. Um, it's often called the Fertile Crescent because it kind of may, may make sort of a crescent shape. Um, and actually, uh, Mesopotamia literally means in the Greek translation between two rivers. Uh, it's just a very fertile area. Uh, some of the famous cities um, that were within the uh, region include Uruk, Nippur, Assur, and Babylon. Everyone knows Babylon. Now, the earliest language in Mesopotamia was Sumerian. Uh, they wrote in cuneiform, which uh, cuneiform means wedge-shaped. Um, that's because of the tool they used to impress the shapes on the wet clay. Uh, cuneiform developed from pictograms, and but at this time, you know, there were only a few scholars that could actually read and write cuneiform, so for the most part, the mass population was illiterate. Uh, later on, during King Sargon's rule, um, they introduced a, syllab uh, a syllabic script, uh, and that, the, and the, that, that was adopted and used more, and, Mes and Mesopotamians in general became more literate. Um, besides having one of the earliest uh, forms of written language, uh, they, they made many advancements in math, science, etc. Um, as far as math goes, they worked with a base 60 system. And that's where our 60-minute hours, um, our 24-hour day, uh, the 360-degree circle, th that's where they all come from. Also, uh, the Sumerian calendar was based on seven days a week, which we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll touch back on that in a moment. Uh, and they also had equations uh, to find areas and volumes and stuff of certain objects, circumferences of circles. They were not fully 100% accurate, uh, as, as some of you, or well, actually as, as you should know from a, a few weeks ago, our Get Schooled by Polmar segment was math. Uh, find the, air, the, the, the area and circumferences of circles involves pi. And pi, um, the actual number is, you know, 3.141592, yada, yada. Uh, they basically, they, they, uh, Sumerians felt, 
or found pi to be 25 divided by 8, which is actually 3.125. So they were like, you know, two hundredths of a decimal off, but that still kind of throws off calculations in the long run. And the problem was they rounded down to just an even 3. <laughs> so even though they knew it was 3.125, they rounded did down to three and use that in their calculations so they weren't fully 100 percent accurate but still ju just the, the the exploration into these equations and, and the usage of them and how close they were is still a, you know a huge step now babylonian astronomers uh they began watching and charting planetary movements uh star movements and they started to like accurately predict solstices and equinoxes they developed a, uh, like I said, a, a seven-day uh, week, but they developed a 12-month calendar cycle based on the phases of the moon. Uh, now, they divided the calendar into two seasons, summer and winter, and I'm assuming for, you know, that would be spring and summer and then fall and winter, you know, the warm months, cold months. Uh, now, as they got better with this, because this is the roots of astronomy and also astrology, because they began associating philosophy and science with astronomy. Uh, now, this is often referred to as the first scientific revolution. Not that, you know, it was exactly scientific because they started, you know, trying to perform exorcisms for medicine and just things like that and basing things on astrology, you know, like, oh, well, the reason why you have a headache is because you know, this planet is in line with this planet, not because, you know, the actual reason. So it wasn't exact science, but it was still just the overall, the the, the, the influx of thought and reasoning and, and combining things together. That was the first scientific revolution. Now, um, also along with this, at the time, they still believed that the Earth was the center of the universe, there was one uh, philosopher, however, one scientist, whatever you want to call him, uh, Seleucus of Seleucia. It was in 190 BC. He believed, accurately of course, that the Earth rotated on its own axis and revolved around the Sun. And he even proved it, but there is no evidence as to how he proved it. Um, now, besides science and math, Mesopotamia uh, developed many other technologies, uh, including, but not limited to, metal and copper working. Uh, glass and lamp making, textile weaving, flood control and water storage, um, also irrigation. Irrigation was huge, actually. I mean, they, they planted a lot. It was a very rich area. They planted a wide variety of crops, all sorts of different fruits and vegetables. And they, they made irrigation ditches and things to actually spread the water across the whole valley and, and you know, get to everything. Uh, they were also famous for establishing the first banking system. Uh, th th that was what Sumeria did. Now, they were also the first recorded religion, obviously, because, you know, they're the first to write. But, now the religion, of course, was polytheistic. The most um, popular uh, Mesopotamian religion, I guess, was that of uh, Sumeria. And uh, the Sumerian gods, uh, they, they grouped it as one... Um, deity no we're not okay not one deity it's, it's almost like, like the christian uh trinity thing you know three and one uh the, the, the god they refer to as on key it's two words a-n-k-i and on is the male part key was the female part and then on key's son was Enlil, who is the air god who they believe would be the most powerful he sat on the throne you know he was like zeus or jupiter or whoever you know um now, Mesopotamians believed that their kings and queens came from the city of gods. They also believed, um, as well, that, that the world was a huge flat disk. And it was just, you know, surrounded by space and heaven above. Well, not really surrounded by space, because they also believed that water was everywhere above and below them. And so, and, and that, that the universe was born out of just this enormous sea. Um, some other, a uh, few other known things... They did bury their dead. They are like the first civilization to be known to do that. And also, um, their pyramids at the time, which would be, the, you know, their temples, uh, is the ziggurat. It's kind of, it's a stepped pyramid. I know you've seen the pictures. If you try and, you know, if this is jogging any of your memory from school, you probably know what it looks like. Uh, that's the most well-known type of Mesopotamian architecture as well. One of the longest standing still. Uh, now, 
um, as far as the geography, because, you know, there were some mountains and just things were spread out, uh, all these cities were kind of isolated. There was poor communicative routes. So a lot of them became city-states, which is probably another term that a lot of you are remembering from your, you know, from your eighth grade tests or whatever. City-states. And, and every once in a while, one of these states would try to rise up and conquer the other ones and unite all of Sumeria, but they would fail. Eventually, the Akkadian Empire did succeed briefly for like a generation, and then the Babylonians took over. Now, um, one last thing here I wanted to touch on as far as, you know, Babylonians, something that you all probably remember, because it's such a huge influence in everything else that has... Um, evolved from since including our western civilization and that would be Hammurabi's code uh, the code of Hammurabi and this was Babel Babylonian law at the time and, and what the code was it, it was a series it was 282 laws it was split into three sections um, it was 282 laws um, with all sorts of things uh, including scaled punishments depending on your social status like if you were a free man versus a free man, or a free man versus a slave, basically slaves got like half status, but slaves are still subject to the law, or vice versa. So if you were a free man and you attacked a slave, you would still have to pay a penalty, but only half the penalty. Whereas if you were a slave attacking a free man, I think you had to pay like double, or like one and one third the penalty, or something like that. It was, But either way... um. One of the biggest things, though, that uh, you probably probably a lot of you remember, and it comes, you know, forth in like Christian religion. You know, Jesus talks about it, and that's an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And what this means is, it's not a call for revenge, like some people think. Like, oh, he attacked me, I need to go kill him. No, basically, what it means, I think, a literal translation was something like, if a man's eye gets destroyed, then the man who does it his eye also gets destroyed. Meaning, you know, you don't kill... So, like, say someone pokes out your eye, you don't go kill him. No. He gets his eye poked out. You know, it, it's about fair justice. Um, except, you know, unless you're a slave. Then you gotta... <laughs> you know, then you only get half, or you gotta pay double, you know. But, uh, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, that is, you know, a huge, you know, part of, you know, the worldwide culture, you know, everywhere. As far as justice. So I think that's going to wrap up our segments. I know it probably wasn't very interesting, but I, you know, it's probably a good refresher for some of you. Um, Mesopotamia, the Fertile Crescent, the dawn of civilization, you know, the first, this is where humans came from. There was a lot of technological advances like we talked about, you know, it was, it was a big deal. Um, also, just to mention, this is where a lot of people believe that the Garden of Eden um, is in this area, would be, you know, like the Fertile Crescent, you know, like Adam and Eve. So, like, even Christians um, and, and Jew and, um, so even Christians and Jews and Muslims, they all um, kind of equate their um, past and history to Mesopotamia as well. Um, and, of course, Babylon was such a huge thing. So... There's a quick crash course. I'm hoping, you know, some of that stuck. I'm going to put up a note board, but it's going to be a lot of, you know, writing and text for the most part. But I'll still put one up anyway, like I've been doing every week. So that'll be on the wall as well. So you can go peep that out, you know, if you want a little refresher. I, I try to um, put the note board online at the same time. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a break. And uh, we'll be back here in a few moments with the Buffalo Juggalo Radio Show. What's up, everyone? I'm Polmar. And I'm Trippy Two-Face. And we're the hosts of the Buffalo Juggalo Radio Show. You can catch us every Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Hatchet Radio. We'll be bringing you all the freshest in underground music news, interviews, featured artists, and so much more. With a special focus on the 716 and beyond, this is the official broadcast of Buffalo Juggalos. Come scope us out at HatchetRadio.net and hit us up at Facebook.com slash Buffalo Juggalo Radio Show. We have tons of contests and giveaways coming up on our page. So don't sleep on it. The Buffalo Juggalo Radio Show, Saturdays at 10 p.m. Eastern. Only on Hatchet Radio.